just to introduce myself, um, I was one of the original Conrad winners with Michael um, back in 2008. Yeah, 2008. So, um, actually, just to give a couple sentences, I uh, Conrad really, really changed my life because it made me realize the value of having a technical understanding as well as being able to put a sales pitch or a business plan together. Um, from there, I studied computer science and business, double majored in it. Um, that was the reason why I picked those majors and then went on to work at both um, large tech companies like Cisco Systems and Intuit, as well as multiple startups. And I'm um, at a company called Hote Look now, which is a fashion uh, flash sale site um, working there as a product manager, so building, building websites. Um, so with that, I'm going to introduce uh, our power pitches. We have two categories giving power pitches today, energy and efficiency energy and environment now, and health and nutrition right after lunch. The energy and environment category includes all fields that study the human use of natural resources and the impact of human activity on the environment. Examples of innovation in this field might include energy storage, energy efficiency, renewables, sustainable land use, recycling solutions, environmental health, climate change, waste management, and more. Today, seven teams, five finalists, and two wild cards will present their innovations that have practical and commercial applications in the energy and environment fields. First up, from Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology in Alexandria, Virginia, please welcome Team Exhaust with their innovation exhauster. Walking through the bus depot at our school, I see harmful CO2 emissions daily. This pollution is an issue of global proportions and calls for immediate action. My name is Vuha Putalapatu. I am part of Team Exhaust, and we are here to make a difference. My name is Kaushik Venkatesh, and I am also a member of Team Exhaust. In the time it took me to say just that, 2.4 million pounds of CO2 was released into the atmosphere. This means that it has a direct correlation with the greenhouse effect and also climate change and other health risks. And the numbers add up. What we find is that the transportation infrastructure and the transportation industry links directly to the CO2 emission problem and collectively in one year produces 76 trillion pounds every year. My name is Anish Susarla, and I'm someone who is personally affected by CO2 emissions. Vehicular emissions uh, aggravate asthma and other health risks in the magnitude of 7 million deaths annually. These can and must be prevented. To revolutionize environmental solutions, we present The Exhauster by Team Exhaust. When we came up with the solution of The Exhauster, we realized that the answer does not lie in complexity, but rather simplicity. The story is quite simple. I was riding down the highway one day when a huge truck blew past me, blowing huge smoggy exhaust gases from its pipe, blinding the car in front of me with a black cloud. Many of you here today have probably faced a similar situation or phenomenon, but as I scrambled to gain sight of the exhauster and of the road, the answer had literally blown right in my face, the exhaust pipe. We found that two primary barriers prevented our target market, the common citizens, from partaking in CO2 emission solutions, cost and inconvenience. Thus, we aim to create an economic solution so that as many people as possible would be able to use our product. Our future plans include inbuilding our product in vehicles during the production phase itself, government subsidization, and mass manufacturing. Our surveys show that nearly every single person, 97% of people, wished for greener car solutions. But why are so many citizens not currently engaging in a solution? Simply because the alternatives do not suffice in the status quo. Right now, consumers need to buy an expensive car, which is economically impractical, or invest in technologies that are dangerously volatile and also expensive. 
So while making our product, we instead tested out various prototypes while keeping the, the paradigm of a CO2 capture at the exhaust pipe. And what we eventually arrived at is an amine tank with stratification. And eventually, or without stratification, and eventually we arrived at with stratification to maximize the surface area of reaction and reactivity to capture CO2. If you look at the top right-hand corner of this, um, of on the screen, you see a video of a CAD design of what the exhauster looks like. You find that the, out, the input pipe, the taller pipe, attaches to the exhaust pipe, and the CO2 goes through and is collected inside the chamber and then purified and let out. If you look over here, you see the amine reagents that we use in this product, and they are highly reactive in a reaction with CO2 in order to bind and, uh, bind and neutralize the CO2. And then, the, uh, uh, just capturing isn't the only benefit. It is actually completely recyclable as well. Once the amine and carbon create a compound, then they can be put in a reclaimer where the amine reagents are completely 100% taken out and the ca stored carbon is also extracted. And the amine can be used again in another exhaustive solution and the carbon can be used in industry such as agriculture and um, polymer making. This is the prototype of the exhauster that validifies the, uh, the design of our product and the proof of concept. Using CAD and a dynamic chemical real-time calculator called Avogadro shown here, we found that our reaction has an efficiency and captured 89.23% of CO2. This is a huge increase as compared to the next best alternative, which only solves for 18%. Our nearly 90% efficiency is revolutionary and uh, optimally will capture 68 trillion pounds of CO2 annually. Once again, 97% of people that we surveyed would be willing to look into an eco-friendly solution regarding vehicular CO2 emissions. But the status quo is what's hindering them from doing so. Thus, we want to meet stakeholders' request, and we made the exhauster five cubic feet in size and approximately $100, meeting the size and cost constraints. In fact, we already have 115 stakeholders in our community alone willing to buy our product. Moreover, we have backing from the scientific community, including scientists from the EPA, professors from George Washington University, and Duke University who have endorsed us. In addition to being an effective solution to a pressing problem, the exhauster is also very economically viable. With the cost of $100 for the exhauster and production cost of $48, we would yield a profit of $51 on each unit produced. This means that an initial test of 200 units would yield a profit of over $10,000 and also neutralize nearly 1,000 metric tons of CO2. In this way, we would use the profits to fund our next uh, round of production self-sufficiently. Also, what we find is that the demand would increase due to incentives and the supply would increase due to economies of scale and mass production. Finally, we wanted the, the requisites for progress, which include kickstarting financial resources and production and guidance in massing uh, production networks, IP advice, and consultations and ma management. Overall, we have a fantastic solution that can solve for incredible issues such as the death of premature children due to, um, due to pollution and also 800 million pounds uh, by the end of this presentation is how much CO2 will be emitted. Overall, we have a very viable and efficient solution as well as a um, vast market opportunity and demand which provides a very fertile solution for Team Exhaust. Thank you. Thank you, Team Exhaust. Our second team is from Illinois' Mapton Science Academy in Aurora, Illinois. Please welcome Titan Power Systems with their innovation, Triple E Battery.
the world is a dark and scary place, and when the lights go out, it gets even darker. But you can keep the lights on with Tripoli battery. I'm Michael, Alec, Remy, Emma, and Daniel. And we are bringing you the Tripoli battery. We are Titan Power Systems. So you're probably asking yourself, what is the Tripoli battery? And I, I sure ask myself as well. Well, the Tripoli battery stands for um, encapsulated emergency energy. So contrary to the name, it's not actually a battery. Instead, it's a generator, which takes the heat produced from nuclear waste and converts it into a safe, reliable green energy, which primarily can help power uh, anything that in an emergency situation, um, such as during a flood or tornado. So you may be wondering how exactly the Tripoli battery does all of this. And the answer to that lies, of course, in our, in our revolutionary use of nuclear waste. Typically, in a nuclear power plant, they will use radioactive material to heat water, which will then be used to turn turbines to generate electricity. However, as time goes on, this nuclear material decays and eventually produces less heat than is economically optimal for the power plant to continue running. When this happens, they will trade out the fuel and replace it with new fuel. However, the old fuel is still not only radioactive, but it's also producing quite a lot of heat. So they put it into wet storage containers where it's left to sit until it decays more. However, as there, these containment pools are expensive to build, it, t it is more economical for the power plants to then move waste that has been sitting there for a while into dry cast storage, where it's then left indefinitely. This is where our innovation comes in. We propose that you can use the energy generated by the nuclear waste as it is decaying in dry cast storage to actually power a Stirling engine, which can then be used to generate electricity, thus providing a wonderful solution for institutions such as power plants, hospitals, military installations, what have you, where it's absolutely critical to have a long-term power supply that in the event of such a disaster would be able to provide a small but certainly very important and critical power to vital systems so everything can maintain its status and continue running. The AAA battery is not the standard product, and because of that, we do not have the standard business plan. Because we are high schoolers, we do not have the resources nor the expertise to gain the clearance to gain ac to have access to the ra radioactive materials needed to build the <laughs> to needed to build this product. Um, because of that, it's essential that we need a partner with either, preferably both the U.S. government and a private company in order to further develop their AAA battery. But the reason we believe this is a good idea and the reason it should be invested in is because in the case of a disaster, this can save countless lives. For example, during the Fukushima disaster of 2011, um, which was caused by the tsunami hitting Japan and flooding the backup, genera the backup diesel generators, which resulted in the cooling systems failing and the reactors to overheat. Over 100 billion U.S. dollars of da in damages and compensation for the people who were forced to evacuate, as well as the hundreds of thousands of people who, were <clears throat> who had to evacuate, could have been prevented had the Tripoli battery been in place because the Tripoli battery is, would not be affected by the flooding as the water would not disrupt the water would not be able to disrupt the Stirling engine and the all of this loss these losses could have been prevented another instance in which unnecess unnecessary loss of life could have been of unnecessary loss of life because of power failure is Hurricane Katrina, in which one-fifth of the deaths were from inpatients in hospitals dying because the powers, power systems in the hospital supporting their lives went out. So for our to, so in order to prove our concept with our product, we designed a prototype. And so we used a Stirling engine from our school science department, and we powered it with hand warmers because nuclear material is, some, is for some reason very hard to come by. So <laughs> by powering it with hand warmers, we then added magnets to the edges of the wheels and measured the change in kinetic energy in order to find the power output of our device. 
So as you can see from our graph, our, our Stirling engine with the hand warmers produced 0.0025 watts, which when compared to the thermal energy outputted by the hand warmers is an efficiency of 0.02%. This is much less than the theoretical maximum efficiency of 9% given our heat differential, but this still proves our concept works. Some reasons that our efficiency is probably extremely low is because the Stirling engine we used is for demonstrative purposes and not for producing electricity. So as Alec just mentioned, prototyping is one of the challenges we have, both because we don't really have access to nuclear fuel and because at every level, we are most concerned about safety and security, both in the building of the Tripoli battery and in its usage. We also have to acknowledge that the efficiency and costs of the Tripoli battery are not necessarily going to stand up to more traditional power sources, but it's supposed to be there as a backup power source and it's giving us energy from a source that previously wasn't. But in all in all, the Tripoli battery is a reliable power source that will keep working even when other systems fail and will keep the lights on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Titan Power Systems. Our third team is from Proctor High School in Proctor, Minnesota. Please welcome SSEFE with their innovation, Students Striving for Eco-Friendly Engineering. Good morning, we are CEFE. CEFE is an acronym for Students Striving for Eco-Friendly Engineering. My name is Alyssa. I'm Johnny. I'm Zach. I'm Danny, and I'm Ben. Our invention is focused on a diaper recycling process. I have a question for you. How many of you are planning on having children, grandchildren, or already do? I want you to think of that loved one in your life during this presentation. <laughs> I'm sure most of you have used disposable diapers at some point in your life, whether that be changing or, yes, wearing. So I need to tell you something. By using these, you helped contribute to a mix of a very large percentage of the airtight biohazards known as landfills. This is not acceptable, and neither is that. We designed a recycling process to reduce our carbon footprint on this earth. quick glimpse of what our CEFE process looks like. Our process would begin with individual residents, nursing homes, and hospitals collecting the diapers and placing them in a specially marked yellow bag that would then be collected with your regular trash. The selling the yellow bags would also be a way to fund the CEFE process. We pulled people through surveymonkey.com, and out of the 126 people we surveyed, 82% were willing to recycle the diapers, 13% were not willing, and 5% were unsure. Once at the waste disposable facility, the yellow bags would be separated from the regular trash and transported to a CEFE processing plant. In stage one of our CEFE process, the diapers would be dumped in a tank to be sanitized. The tank would be filled with a solution of 30 to 100% of hydrogen peroxide mixed with water. The hydrogen peroxide solution will kill 99% uh, of all spores and bacteria in the diapers. An alternative to the hydrogen peroxide is autoclaves. Autoclaves use heat, pressure, and steam to sanitize the diapers to be processed. 
Many agencies that deal with human and biohazard waste use autoclaves for sanitization. Stage two, rollers would be used to remove excess liquid from the diapers. Stage three, the inner layer would be separated from the outer layer. The inner layer of the diaper is made up of two things, sodium polyacrylate and cellulose, which is wood pulp. These two components are highly absorbent, whereas sodium polyacrylate can hold up to 300 times its weight in regular tap water. The outer layer is made up of two things, number two and number four plastics. These plastics can be melted down to make plastic bottles, plastic lumber, plastic furniture, and also the yellow bag mentioned before. In the fourth stage of our process, the inner layer of the diaper would be heated, shrinking the polyacrylate down to its original size, while the cellulose would remain on top. And then we tested heating the inner layer at different temperatures and found 400 degrees for 15 minutes was most effective. And the cellulose would either be burned for energy or sold in the open market to be used in fire retardant products. Fire retardant products that use cellulose-based materials are categorized as class A fire retardants. And then Polyacrylate could also be used into or made into fire retardant, or it could be recycled into more diapers. And it's made into a gel like substance that's applied to the surface before the fire reaches it and it prevents it from being burnt. It has been tested and proven highly effective in Orange County, Florida in 1998. 20 homes were sprayed, all 20 homes were protected, and a dog even survived in its doghouse. We have a video overview of our Cefe process. In the time it took for us to say our intro, 2,280 diapers were thrown into landfills in the United States alone. These diapers will sit in the landfill for 200 to 500 years before they decompose. In five minutes, 200,000 people will throw away diapers. All those diapers are thrown into covered landfills, not exposed to the sun or air, and we don't know how many thousands of years it could take for them to decompose. Because of the sealed and covered landfills, even those diapers labeled biodegradable will not decompose. To add to it, think about this. As you toss your diapers into the trash, you are adding to the 82 million pounds of raw fecal matter going into the environment every year. A typical baby goes through 3,800 diapers in a two and a half year span. If the disposable diapers that we use each year can fill the Yankee Stadium 15 times over, go to the moon and back nine times, or go around the world 90 times, what can we do to stop it? Right now, Americans recycle a lot of things, but have they ever thought of recycling diapers? Now introducing the Cefe process. Our process would help reduce our landfill waste by 30%. It would eliminate 7.6 billion pounds of non-decomposing garbage each year. Once a diaper reaches the waste management facility, it would be held in a tank ready to be sanitized to separate the human waste and the recycled materials. Once our Cefe process would remove the outer layer from the inner layer, the outside of the diaper is made of number two and number four plastics. The plastic can be melted down and recycled. The inner layer of the diaper is split into wood pulp and would be burned as energy. The middle of the diaper would be separated and reused. Helping reduce 30% of our landfills or eliminate 7.6 billion pounds of garbage each year is up to you. Invest in our Cefe process and help change the world. We hope that you were inspired to think about your environmental footprint and the impact we all have on our earth. This is our future. We can change it. Thank you for your time and interest. Thank you, Cefe. Our fourth team is from North Carolina Sci School of Science and Math in Durham, North Carolina. Please welcome Frack Boys with their innovation, Aquavarum. Good morning. 
My name is Kunal Daya. My colleagues, Vikram Mikit, John Waters, Michael Yang, and I are from the North Carolina School of Science and Math in Durham, North Carolina. And our product is Aquavirum, a filtration system meant to combat the environmental drawbacks of the energy production method known as hydraulic fracturing or fracking. So what is hydraulic fracturing? Hydraulic fracturing is, in, is the injection of chemically treated water deep underground to, um, to break up rock formations. When they break up the rock formations, natural gas is then released and collected and burned for energy use. The main environmental benefit of using this technology is that um, it's the cleanest burning greenhouse gas. The main economic benefit of fracking is energy independence. The United States is the fourth largest reservoir of natural, ga natural gas. Because of this, fracking has grown 44% over the past 10 years and is expected to triple over the next 10. This means a lot of American jobs. Fracking also causes a huge decrease in oil prices. Before fracking's implementation and prol proliferation, oil costs were around $150 per barrel, and now they have gone below $100. So clearly, fracking has enormous economic potential. Why then is it such a contentious issue in our nation today? To put simply, the damage that it deals to the environment. Fracking fluid left behind in fracking wells releases chemicals into surrounding groundwater chemicals that pose a serious risk to public health. In order to combat these risks, we developed Aquavirum, a water filtration system that systematically targets and removes the most dangerous toxins from the water, namely volatile organic compounds. So here's a 3D model of our prototype. This can be applied at any point in the wastewater treatment process. So water would be introduced to the system and go first into a membrane contactor. This is where water and gaseous compounds would meet, and then due to an induced vacuum, the concentration of the gas in the water would be reduced. We do this mainly to remove methane from the water. At this stage, the water is evaporated, removing any contaminants with a higher boiling point than water. The water vapor is then forced through a series of membranes, which remove additional con contaminants through the concepts of Fick's Law. This stage of the process, uh, the quantitative design requirements required for the membranes were determined through computational modeling. Our model, made with NetLogo, a Java-based application, and under the concept of fixed law, shows that the water is able to travel freely through these hollow fiber membranes during the membrane gas separation process, but the other gases contaminants are slowed down greatly. And thus, when a perpendicular force is applied to the whole process, water is the only particle that has enough speed to go through. And in the end, all we're left with is water vapor. Now for the financial side of our product. To begin with, our beachhead market, or the market that we first plan on entering, is going to be that of fracking companies and oil companies. We calculated the total addressable market, or basically if everyone who needed our product bought our product, to be $125 million per year. This just shows the high potential for growth and profit in this industry. Now, other market segments include city municipalities, private homeowners, private companies, and organizations like uh, the Environmental Protection Agency. Basically, anyone with a vested interest in trying to keep water clean. You might be wondering, well, why do fracking companies need our product? What, what benefit do they gain? We believe there are immense gains to be made that begin with the process that starts with the installation of our product, Aquavirum. So once our process is installed, increase in safety will occur as the toxins that were once causing health ailments are being removed from the water. This, in turn, allows public sentiment and appeal for fracking companies to increase because people will no longer see the negative drawbacks associated with the health risks and will instead only see the beneficial economic gains to be made. There are two large benefits that result from this. To begin with, the fracking companies can continue to grow and expand because you know, uh, communities become more accepting of fracking and don't try to prevent it because they see that those negative risks are mitigated and reduced. This, in turn, causes sales and growth because you know, they're expanding. The second large benefit that be made is that the fracking companies themselves gain reduced liability as well as protection from possible lawsuits. In the last year alone, there were several hundred civil lawsuits against fracking companies, that was the vast majority of which ended in settlements being paid out of the fracking company's pocket, which was a costly payment for them. Just recently, a Texas man and his family was awarded $3.9 million from a fracking company. The cost to install our product is a small price to pay for protection against costly lawsuits like these. But why Aquavirum? I hope this competitive matrix helps you to visualize why our product is better than all current products and patents on the market. Just to name two examples, 
Thermal cleaning is a current process that actually introduces organics into the water, which is not only counterintuitive, but useless when trying to clean cracking water. Additionally, reverse osmosis is a process which is not only very expensive, but, but loses between 20 and 40% of the water it is trying to clean. Cost-wise, for every dollar spent annually on current fracking methods, aquavirin will only cost 60 cents. And because our product is built for the long term, over a five-year period, for every five dollars spent on current fracking methods, aquavirin will only cost one dollar and will achieve a cleaner and safer end result. So fracking has enormous economic potential, especially here in the U.S., but that potential is left untapped due to the damage that fracking deals to the environment. Aquavirum solves this problem, thereby cracking the fracking issue. Thank you. Thank you, Frack Boys. Our fifth team is from West Ridge Middle School in Austin, Texas. Please welcome Hydra City with their innovation, Hydra Flaps. Hi, I'm Dylan Samra. And I'm Everest Marr. We're from Austin, Texas, representing Team Hydro City. When you were little, did you ever see those rainbow-colored patterns on the tops of puddles after a rainstorm? Didn't they look pretty? Well, it turns out those rainbow colors were oils and pollutants picked up by runoff and taken straight to your drinking water sources. And let me tell you, they're not too pretty to drink. Stormwater runoff has been affecting the, envir the environment for hundreds of years. It can build up and cause flooding, or pick up pollutants on the ground and carry them into your drinking water sources. The problem is that in urban areas with so many impervious surfaces, including roads, rainwater will absorb pollutants on the ground and cause serious damage to the environment. Billions of dollars are spent trying to clean the water polluted by stormwater runoff. Current solutions, such as rainwater harvesting and permeable roads, can somewhat solve the problem of urban flooding, but they do not address the issues caused by pollution. Our solution, the hydroflaps, solve all of the urban problems of stormwater runoff before the rain even hits the ground. The hydroflaps are panels created from carbon fiber reinforced ABS plastic. They are attached to the sides of buildings. When deployed, the hydroflaps cover the area between the buildings at an angle so that they can collect and channel nearly 100% of the collected water underground where it turns a turbine to generate electricity, is filtered with sand and UV filters, and then taken to water sources. The hydroflaps are attached to the buildings using hinges. Cables allow the hydroflaps to deploy when rain is detected and then retract when the rain stops. Since the hydroflaps are aligned vertically against the buildings when not in use, they do not collect pollutants like airborne particles or bird droppings. This keeps them clean enough to collect rainwater without contaminating it. Prototyping on a scaled down model proved our design works and we are looking into patents to keep our innovative ideas safe. The main purpose for the hydroflap system is to prevent the spread of pollution due to stormwater runoff. But a wonderful side benefit is that it keeps the rain from ever reaching the ground. Remember all of those times you got caught downtown in a rainstorm and forgot your umbrella? Now you'll never have to get your clothes or hair ruined by bad weather again. You won't even have to jump over a puddle to cross the street. The hydroflaps have three main functions. First, they are a simple solution to eliminating pollution caused by runoff. Second, they save and collect usable water while generating electricity. And best of all, they pay for themselves over time. Now, hydroflaps vary in size depending on the space between buildings. But in our presentation, we will be referring to a city block with, uh, on a 180 by 180 foot plot with 180 by 30 foot hydroflaps attached to four buildings. The United States has an average rainfall of 50 inches per year. In our example block, we would be able to collect one million gallons of water annually. With this water, we would also be able to generate 3,500 kilowatt hours of energy. 
Now, the initial cost of the hydroflaps is a bit high, but considering the amount of pollution prevention, the trade-off is well worth it. The four building, in the four building example, the cost of the hydroflap panels, deployment system, piping, and turbine-driven electric generator is $800,000. HydroCity would sell a system of this size for about one to two million. Hydroflaps would be installed in commercial buildings in urban areas. In doing so, the buildings would be considered green buildings, increasing the value, allowing the commercial property to raise its rates by 1%. In our 180 by 180 foot plot, this 1% would generate an additional, an additional $228,000 annually. Local governments would get 25% of this $228,000 in return for the purchase of hydroflaps. Purchase and installation of the hydroflaps comes in a few steps. First, commercial property owners request local governments to have their buildings outfitted with hydroflaps. Next, local governments would purchase the hydroflaps from HydroCity and then HydroCity would install the hydroflaps on the buildings. Finally, the local government would contract with the commercial building property owners for 25% of the extra revenue gained from premium rates. And the commercial property owners would benefit from free electricity the, the system generates. Since the hydroflap system is so effective at reducing pollution due to stormwater runoff, local governments would have a large incentive to purchase these systems for their urban areas. In addition, we plan to lobby state and federal governments to pass legislation to help subsidize for the hydroflap systems. This would be analogous to the rebates and tax incentives that are given to homeowners that install solar panels on their houses. In Austin, solar panel systems are 75% subsidized with rebates and tax incentives. If we could enact a similar program for the hydroflaps, then the system would pay for itself in a mere 6 to 13 years. With the hydroflaps, everybody wins. Hydro City would sell the hydroflaps for more than they cost to produce, creating a profit. Local governments would be able to get their money back after a few years. Commercial building owners profit from the premium rates for the green building designation. And the community, community would benefit from clean water, clean energy, and a greener planet. Imagine a world where you never have to worry about getting caught in the rain, where building owners look forward to thunderstorms, since they can generate free electricity for them, and where, best of all, the pollutants, cover, the pollutants covering our streets are never swept into local streams to be drunk later. Imagine a world of hydroflaps, saving the world one drop at a time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hydro City. Please welcome, sorry. Um, our sixth team is from North Carolina School of Science and Math. Please welcome SunCap with their innovation, SunCap. Good morning, everyone. Do you want to save time, energy, and money? Well, consider investing in SunCap. Our product is a tire hub cut that generates electricity from the hybrid of piezoelectric generators and solar cells. Imagine you're in a long car ride, say, traveling from Raleigh, North Carolina, down to the Radisson here in Orlando, Florida. That's a distance of approximately 641 miles, over 3 million feet. Since the average car has a tire diameter of around 16 inches, that makes for over 800,000 tire revolutions. These rotations generate heat due to friction and impact, and this heat is only lost into the environment. 
The heat generated by rotations in friction may seem irrelevant, but it, as well as driving, is one of the largest contributors to global warming. Gasoline, a fossil fuel, is currently used for driving and generating electricity, and accounts for more CO2 production than oil and natural gas. Private vehicular transportation accounts for 34% of the U.S. overall greenhouse gas emissions in 2012. This calls for a solution, something that can enhance vehicles' efficiency while reducing their emissions. Current methods on the slide, such as catalytic converters, focus only upon making minute changes upon pre-existing fuel converters and burners. These methods do not eliminate the harmful use of fossil fuels. Instead, they only focus upon improving methods that harness fossil fuels, and thus only increase our dependency upon these harmful gas gasoline and oils. Hybrid and electric cars use electric vehicle batteries, AKA traction batteries. These are heavy and expensive, namely because they cannot be con constantly reusable and rechargeable while driving. In order to address this issue of heavy traction batteries, we considered a product that can charge the batteries while driving. Recharging the batteries while driving reduces the need for large long-term energy storage batteries. While also moving in a sustainable direction, we considered harvesting energy in alternative ways. By using tires that rotate a huge amount of times and receive an excessive amount of sunlight, we created SunCap, a novel combination of piezoelectricity and solar energy that harvests energy with a hubcap, a piece of metal typically only used for decoration. The first part of our SunCap prototype is the solar panels. These are located on the exterior face of our hubcap at 100 degree angles and are connected to rechargeable batteries located on the interior face of the hubcap. The second part of SunCap consists of piezoelectric generators. So first off, what is piezoelectricity? Well, piezoelectricity is the ability for some crystals to be able to generate an electric current under the influence of an electric force or stress. These generators line the rim of our tire where they harvest the energy where our tires impact the ground. Our prototype consists of five solar panels and six piezoelectric generators, which we conducted tests to measure energy generation. These components send their energy to recharge a battery. The prototype we tested it was not fully developed due to limited resources. However, our final, prototype, our final design includes piezoelectric generators that line the entire circumference of the tire to allow for optimal collection of uh, energy from the forces of the tire and the road while the tire is rotating. Our phase two design consists of 10 solar panels and 25 piezoelectric generators to ensure maximum harvesting of energy as well as savings returned. We also will apply for a license and a patent to ensure product protection. This electricity can then be used to charge the battery of a hybrid car and an electric car. There are two benefits with this. The first one, it would extend the mileage and the life of the battery. The second one, it would reduce the need for an expensive, heavy battery. Thus, SunCap is able to effectively harvest the energy from both the solar panels as well as the piezoelectric generators. It employs the free energy from impact, friction, and the sun, and converts it to usable energy for vehicles. By introducing this new way to harvest energy, we were able to harness this energy that would have otherwise gone to waste. SunCap is a long-term investment that is cheap, clean, and convenient that appeals to all car companies. For gasoline-based cars, SunCap would enhance the effect of car alternator and provides another source of energy. For the hybrid cars, SunCap would reduce the time to need to charge at home, which greatly increases consumers' ease. Furthermore, for electric cars, SunCap would continuously recharge the battery. Therefore, uh, uh, which, uh, uh, there is two kind of the equipments on the market, AC Level 1 and AC Level 2 equipments. With SunCap, however, the rate is really slow. With SunCap installation, SunCap would help to assist the power and to power the engine. Since the most expensive part of an electric car is the battery, reducing the cost of the battery reduces the overall cost of the car. Many people do not buy electric cars because of their exorbitantly high costs. Therefore, reducing the cost of the car raises incentive for consumers to buy them. With more people driving electric cars, the demand for gas-powered cars decreases, which decreases overall CO2 emissions as well as our reliance upon fossil fuels. Keeping the consumer's overall safety and convenience in mind, SunCap will not disturb the rotational balance of the vehicle. In fact, it increases the ratio of unsprung to sprung mass on the vehicle, allowing for a smoother drive. Based on our preliminary data, the effective cost of SunCap will be around $500 for a set of four, including a $40 profit. Assuming near ideal conditions, 9,500 miles of driving is enough to produce 158 kilowatt hours of power. This is enough to return the initial investment of the consumer. This also saves time for the 
consumer as it saves time between charges. SunCup appeals to all car companies and consumers alike. By choosing SunCup, we are going to provide you long time returns as energy. Please invest in us. Together, we are going to change the world, moving into a greener and brighter future, away from the dark time of the air pollution and the unsustainable lifestyles. Thank you. Let's start a revolution. Thank you, SunCap. Our final team is from Upper St. Clair High School in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Please welcome Illuminac with their innovation, Illuminate. Good morning, respected judges, members, parents of the audience, and organizers. I'm Kriti Shaw. Hi, I'm Alex Brofsky. And we are Team Illuminac, a freshman team from Upper St. Clair High School from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and our product is called Ye Illuminate. We use a lot of energy. We rely heavily on fossil fuels as they account for 67% of all of the fossil fuels in the United States. In addition, we use 125,000 tons of batteries in the United States one year alone. So we have to examine alternative portable battery solutions, but what and how? Our innovation is Illuminate, a light-up jacket that is both battery-free and not connected to the electric grid. So how is this possible? Our solution is to harness human energy and use that to generate electricity. We employ a technology called a Peltier tile, which uses the temperature differential of our body heat on one side and the external environment on the other side to generate electricity, which we feed to LEDs. So once the user wears their jacket, they would be immediately surrounded in light. Let's understand how it works. What you are holding is called the Peltier tile. So this is how it works. It generates electricity based on the heat energy that is passing over the tile from hot to cold over the heat gradient. This electricity is then taken from the size of the tiles and used to power innovation. So Peltier tiles require a temperature differential. To reduce the minimum temperature differential required, we need to use a certain number of tiles. As shown on this nonlinear graph, to have a small temperature differential, we need a significant amount of tiles. After making some calculations, we decided that with 10 tiles, we would need a minimum temperature differential of 17 degrees Celsius. Adding a safety factor of 20%, we added two more tiles to our design. We wanted to ensure, after figuring out the number of tiles, that we were generating the correct amount of voltage to power the LEDs, which would be 3.3 volts. So we employed the ISL 9111 boost converter to ensure this. So how the actual circuit works is, you take the energy from the Peltier tile array, you put it into the ISL 9111, which then goes down to the array of LEDs, and the lights light up. <laughs> Ah, this is our original prototype design. As you see, we have it here. Um, basically, it's got the... This so, is, yeah, there so this is a video showing one of our tests. We place Peltier tiles into ice, and the difference between the room temperature and ice ge generated enough electricity. Now, this is a video of me actually putting on the final prototype and the lights illuminating. So after cooling the tiles of the jacket, because we were inside for several minutes, um, I would put on the jacket, 
and as you'll see very soon, the lights will light up. So. Okay. So with our experiments, we observed that we were able to generate electricity for 35 minutes with one addition of hot water at 118 degrees Fahrenheit. In addition, we needed a temperature differential of 40 degrees Fahrenheit or 22 degrees Celsius for 19 LEDs to remain lit. As expected, our design was sensitive to temperature differentials and higher temperature differentials are beneficial. In addition, we noticed that the heat sinks on the backs of the Peltier tiles rejected heat quickly, resulting in a loss of hot water temperature fairly quickly. All right, so right now, this jacket right here cost about $70 to make. But we believe with wholesale costs, we could put that down to about $30, which is what you'd usually pay for a jacket today. This may seem a little bit expensive, but the energy savings pay for themselves in a couple months. Um, so there's a lot of, obviously, potential applications for Illuminate, um, including you know, people exercising in the dark, um, when they do research in remote places, giving them light. Um, also, more importantly, emergency response teams could wear them when venturing to remote places. Um, life jackets on airplanes, I flew in an airplane here, I would know. Um, <laughs> It would be useful to, to, for using them to power them up and also part of emergency safety kits. So after getting our circuit working, we decided to get feedback from various stakeholder and mentors. Besides getting feedback from a technical standpoint, we got feedback from a retail and a medical perspective. These two experts rated our product on innovation uniqueness, user friendliness, safety, and aesthetic appeal. Mr. Fred S., a, a manager at a multi-brand national retailer, had a number of suggestions. He said we should place LED lights all over our jacket to improve safety. In terms of fabric and color, we should use nylon and solid dark or fluorescent colors. He thought our cost of $30 was good for a prototype and said we could sell it at a higher price at a specialty store. In addition, he said we should extend just beyond jackets. Dr. Putney, a medical doctor, thought our idea was innovative. He thought our circuit was safe and he suggested testing over extended periods of time. In addition, he said we should place Peltier tiles on areas of the body usually left uncovered, such as the head, arms, or legs. And he said we should make our circuit portable using items such as Velcro. So this is our commercialization plan. We have three steps of funding, and we first will start off by miniaturizing our product, and after going through these steps, we would like to launch it in our potential applications. We believe that by harvesting human energy, we can make a positive change in how we power our lives. Remember this, you illuminate, changing the way you power your lives. Thank you.